There is one conspiratorial belief that pretty much all flat earthers believe. In addition, I'm pretty sure there's many non-flat earthers who believe it too. I am of course talking about the belief that outer space is fake. Hello all and welcome along to another video with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Okay, before we get stuck into this one, just a quick reminder that this channel now uploads daily. So if you watch but haven't subscribed yet, please do so you don't miss any of the fresh uploads. Right, on with today's video and you've got to hand it to the space deniers, haven't you? They are nothing if not consistent. Consistently wrong, that is. Despite mountains of evidence, hundreds of thousands of professionals, live footage and satellite data, plus the small matter of literal people in space, they'll still dig their heels in and cry fake. So today we're looking at five of the most stubborn, debunked, recycled lies that space deniers not only keep clinging to, but repeat consistently. These aren't just misunderstandings, by the way. These are ideas that get disproved over and over and over and yet still crop up in forums, videos and comment sections. Let's get underway then with lie number one, which is we can't get past the Van Allen belts. Yes, the big glowing force field in the sky that NASA somehow forgot to mention when they made all those moon landing documentaries. This is the claim. The Van Allen belts are full of deadly radiation, so no human could possibly survive a trip through them. Therefore, we never went to the moon. That's what they say. So let's start with the science, shall we? The Van Allen belts are zones of energetic particles, mostly electrons and protons, and they're trapped by Earth's magnetic field. They're shaped like two big donuts layered above the atmosphere, extending from around 1,000 to 60,000 kilometers above the surface. Now, yes, prolonged exposure to high energy radiation is dangerous, but, and this is the key, exposure time matters. The Apollo missions passed through the belts in around 60 to 90 minutes, and they did it on a trajectory that minimized the amount of time in the densest regions. It's like running through a smoky room instead of camping out inside it with a gas mask full of holes. The radiation dose from the Apollo journeys was around 11 millisieverts. For comparison, a CT scan can give you between 10 and 20, and pilots receive around 2.5 each year just for flying around. NASA engineers knew about these belts since the 1950s. That was thanks to the Explorer 1 mission. They planned around them, they shielded the spacecraft, and they monitored astronaut health during the missions. No one died, no one even got sick. But here's the part that really annoys me. These deniers will say things like, NASA says we can't go through them today, which is just a spectacular misunderstanding of context. Modern missions like Orion are studying radiation shielding, especially for long-term deep space travel. Not because we've suddenly forgotten how to get through the belts, but because going to places like Mars means living in space for months, not just a few hours of exposure like on Apollo. They're planning for extended habitation. The Van Allen belts aren't an invisible death zone. They're just another obstacle humans have already overcome over 50 years ago. And that brings us nicely onto lie number two then. The ISS is just a studio set. Apparently, it's easier for global space agencies to fake continuous live streams or zero gravity using wires or green screens or CGI than it is to, you know, put people in orbit, which we've been doing since 1961, by the way. Let's look at the absurdity of this. The International Space Station has been continually occupied since the year 2000. That's over two decades of live broadcasts, research experiments, cross-national crew rotations, and regular cargo shipments. It orbits the Earth roughly 16 times per day, and it's visible from the ground. Yes, you can look up and see it pass overhead. You can photograph it. Amateur astronomers routinely track its position using nothing but backyard telescopes and a bit of maths. You can also communicate with it. Amateur radio operators around the world tune in to receive signals from the ISS as it passes overhead. Sometimes they get a quick hello from astronauts using ham radio gear. So if this is a hoax, it's one that involves people like amateur radio people, sky watchers, astronomers, and every time zone on Earth playing along in perfect sync for 20 years. The space deniers love to point out wire mistakes in some of the footage, often highlighting things like compression glitches, 
or artifacts caused by low bitrate or JPEG blockiness. You know, normal digital video behavior. They'll zoom in 300% and scream, look, you can see the harness. When in reality, it's some stray hair or static artifact. And those infamous bubbles they claim to see during spacewalks, usually dust particles or ice. This is not a smoking gun. This is a misunderstanding of how cameras work, really. You know, in space. If the ISS is indeed fake, it's the most elaborate, flawless, real-time simulation in human history. And for what? A few science experiments and the occasional live-streamed ukulele solo? Come on now. Right then, let's move on to lie number three. And that is that all photos of Earth are CGI. This is a textbook case of, I don't understand how imaging works, so it must be fake. Photos of Earth from space are often met with cries of, it's just CGI or they're too perfect, or why are the clouds repeating? Why is there no motion blur, etc., etc. First, yes, some images are composites. That's not deception, that's standard scientific image processing. Satellites like the Himawari 8 or the GOES satellite capture multiple narrow wavelength bands, infrared, visible light, UV, all that sort of stuff. These are then stitched together to form full color photos. It's the same process as your smartphone using multiple exposures to create one photo, just with a few thousand more kilometers altitude. Some satellites also produce data visualizations, and these are often color enhanced. They help scientists determine things like temperature and moisture, and other variables too. Now that's not CGI, it's data representation, like a weather map. But we also have actual full photos of Earth. Apollo 17's blue marble, Apollo 8's Earthrise, images from Galileo and Voyager, and of course the real-time ISS footage. They show a rotating Earth with shifting cloud systems, night and day transitions and even lightning strikes. And bonus round, you can even photograph Earth's curvature yourself. Get a weather balloon, strap on a GoPro and let it rise to 30,000 meters. Then watch as the curve reveals itself, just like Mr. Sensible did. But when you show that sort of thing to a space denier, they'll often say, fish eye lens, even when it's not. Even when the same curvature appears across multiple cameras and lenses. So that begs the question then, what do they actually want? Blurry, unenhanced, uncolored, compressed images? Taken by whom exactly? This lie isn't about imagery really, it's about willful ignorance. Right, let's move on to lie number four then. And this is that satellites don't exist, it's all balloons and ground towers. Yes, this is a real claim. There's a growing chorus of space deniers saying this. They often say satellites don't exist, they're just high altitude balloons. Or worse, GPS and internet comes from undersea cables and ground towers only. So let's play this out shall we? There are currently over 9,000 satellites in orbit, with thousands more planned too, with companies like SpaceX and Amazon. These include GPS satellites, Earth observation satellites, weather monitoring ones, comms relay, space telescopes and the Starlink internet satellite. You can track them online in real time with exact positions and velocities and orbital elements. Amateur astronomers can watch satellite flares and photograph the ISS passing in front of the moon. It's all public. As for the balloons, I mean, sure, we use weather balloons, but they only stay aloft for a few hours and they can't cover large areas. And they're not remotely capable of delivering consistent internet, real-time positioning, or full Earth observation. And cell towers? Well, they can't explain remote GPS use, or how satellite imagery of your house gets updated from orbit. Saying satellites are fake because you haven't seen one is silly, really, because all you need to do is go outside on a clear night and look up. Let your eyes adjust, and soon you'll be seeing loads. Okay, let's move on to our last lie, then, that is constantly repeated by space deniers. Lie number five, and that is quite a general one, is that the whole thing is a giant conspiracy. This is a catch-all, get-out-of-jail reality card. When all else fails, when the evidence is too hard to ignore, they just throw up their hands and say, it's all a conspiracy, NASA lies, space SpaceX lies, Russia lies, the European Space Agency lies, everyone lies. Except me, of course, and this one guy I know on Telegram. If you push them as well, it will quickly escalate to things like it's the Freemasons, it's the Illuminati, the Deep State, whatever flavour of nonsense it is that month. Here's the issue of all of that. For this to be true, hundreds of thousands of people will all have to be in on it. Not just astronauts, not just NASA, but engineers telescope manufacturers, rocket hobbyists, weather forecasters, aviation authorities, telecoms companies, radar technicians, and even Google Maps. And not one person in 60 years has spilled the beans. Not a single email leak or any sorts of photo, not even a blurry behind the scenes video. What type of airtight organization are we talking about here? Because I've worked in enough organizations to know that humans are not good at keeping secrets. 
And why would rival nations like US, China, Russia and India all play along? But apparently they're collaborating flawlessly on the greatest hoax in human history. Also the budget argument too. NASA gets $25 billion a year, of course they lie. Okay let's put that into context, the US military gets over $800 billion a year. Americans spend more on pet food than they do on NASA. If this was a money grab, they picked the most elaborate and public way to do it, complete with launches and live streams and astronauts tweeting from space. This lie isn't about money at all, it's about control. Because once you believe that everything is fake, then nothing can be used to prove you wrong. This is not skepticism, it's a world view based on paranoia. Space deniers don't just get the science wrong, they get the thinking wrong. They reject evidence not because it's weak, but because it's inconvenient. They're not asking questions either, they're just protecting a conclusion. But of course reality doesn't care about feelings. It doesn't care if the truth hurts your worldview. The sky is not a lie, space is not a green screen, and you, yes you, are standing on a rotating rock orbiting a giant nuclear fusion reactor in a vast expanding universe. Well there we go everyone, I do hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, please do let me know in the comments below as well as any other lies you've heard space deniers say, as I say we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching, it truly is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel, hitting the thumbs up button too, uh, and sharing if the video takes you. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for the return of Nathan Oakley and I'm not happy about this one. See you then. <laughs>